Hello viewers, Super GT here. I've been looking forward to this race coming back to GT7. The Daytona 10 lapper in Group 3 machinery. This is a race that came up a good couple of months ago and produced some very, very good racing. So we're going to jump back in and hope that it also, once again, produces some very, very good racing. Up against, you see there, at the back of the grid, lots of cars to try to overtake here at Daytona. Now, this track is quite good for overtaking because of the very long straights on the oval section, of course. But then on the infield, you still have plenty of opportunity to go for moves. So, starting here in P16, I think we should have some good fun here trying to make our way through the order. Now, we tried to perform an old switcheroo kind of half works there. At least we set up the rest of the move there, and then we can continue it through the fast sweeping left into the big braking zone here and we have the inside line into this right hander that's our first position of the race achieved up into p15 10 laps to try to make the moves and our second one came not too long after at the end of lap number one going into the bus stop chicane and well i kind of made an absolute hash of that because i cut the first apex way too much and i actually cut the final apex i cut so much that you see the amount of momentum i carried and got through three cars there on the exit. But uh, then surrendering those positions immediately upon serving the 1.5 second penalty. So ending the first lap in 14th, um, the Jaguar driver there, very, very wide. And we get 13th. How about 12th? Let's take a look. And is he going to get a penalty? It looked like it was quite wide on the exit, yes. 0.5 second penalty very easy to do that and then moments later serves the penalty middle of the straight really really hurts your lap time that when you have to serve any sort of penalty on this track one of the worst tracks i'll say and then looking for this outside move against the mercedes benz and there's a car off we go around the outside two positions in one go and boom job done up into p10 you're starting the race on the medium tyre, so just for context, you have to do, uh, you have to use the medium tyre and the hard tyre in this race. So I'm on the medium, which is the better of the two. Therefore, that probably explains a lot of this uh, movement going forward. I'm able to make quite a lot of overtakes here with the superior grip of the medium tyres, assuming that these guys are on the hard. I don't know. Maybe they're on the medium and just not driving quite as well. That's P9. And um, how about P8? Let's take a look. Now, this is quite a weird overtake because this guy just didn't really... Well, he kind of surrendered the inside. And normally, you know, just drive to the left and there's nothing I can do. I have to go around the outside. And he just kind of gave me the inside. Then this guy drove quite wide. And um, I was able to get the move done on the exit of the corner. Up into P7. Now P5 after a couple of people went into the pit lane to change tyres. And... Looking for a move now on the Spaniard. And um, also for context, everyone is driving, pretty, mu well, pretty much everyone is driving the Toyota Supra, which is pretty much always the overpowered car when it comes to any sort of power circuit, which this is. Now, on the back straight, looking for this move. He covers the inside. I'm going to go to the outside. I do have the superior momentum here. And we are side by side going in. This could be a tricky move here. Just carry the brake slightly later. Thankfully, he backs out just at the last moment. And I'm able to go up into P4. End of lap 5 then. And a couple of cars go in. You see there, on the medium tyre, still got some grip left. Although, it's not looking pretty. So I think this will be the final lap on this set of tyres. And then we'll go for four laps on the hard. And here, we're up into P2. Now this isn't of course fully representative because most people have done their pit stop and I haven't and therefore uh, we'll see where I am. Now I drive a little bit too wide there getting a, a half second penalty. Thankfully though when you serve it as you go into the pit lane you don't lose quite as much time because you're going into the pit lane anyway. It doesn't cost you as much if you as if you carry on. So my tyres were pretty much done there. So Bono we um on a request that we we pit and change them and here i am in p7 could drive very wide immediately with the cold tires and the new tires 
gain a position on the exit. I'm into P6. Now, this would be quite tricky because I'm on the worst tyre out of the two and I have to drive on it for four laps against presumably some guys who may well be on the medium right now. So we see what we can do. But I think we definitely have a shot of P5. Now, this track, because of the nature of it with the long straights, you can keep up with slightly faster cars if you're in the slipstream. Now, he makes a very, very big hash of that exit there. And I wasn't quite sure if he was going to cover the inside or not. But he does eventually. Moving to the outside. Are we going to be able to get this move? Not really. Tuck back in to the slipstream for a second serving. After which I do get the momentum. Heading in towards the bus stop. Thankfully, backing out on the inside. We're able to go around the outside and claim P5. And not get a penalty there. It looked very close. But I think we just avoided it. Uh, no, I didn't. Did you see that? <laughs> and uh, surrendering two positions upon serving that penalty, which was deeply frustrating. So I had quite a lot of work to do all over again. And through this left. Now, this was quite an interesting moment because I went up the inside and then... <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, the German ends up getting killed. But it, it kind of looked like he just made a very late dash across and made a very unpredictable move of uh, underbreaking which I couldn't really deal with. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you let me know your thoughts on that move, but we eventually get back past him on the main straight at the end of lap eight. I'm going to have to complete the move on the brakes around the outside and just getting our braking point mark, uh, brake marker point dead right and we get the move done. Uh, P5. And that was that really. There wasn't really any potential to get any further positions. So it was P5 ultimately. That's not bad. We started P16. 11 positions raised overall. And in this one, I wanted to cover this race quite quickly. Because the third race you're going to watch was an incredible race. Uh, this one, not so much. We do gain a position quite quickly. Courtesy of the Danish driver making a mistake. Or being caught up in some incident there on the first corner. Starting with a hard tyre this time around. But still able to make some moves and positions in this first part of the race. That guy there with a four second penalty. And then trying to go around the outside. And you're looking for the last white line here, which is that one there. And then breaking pretty much on the end of that. And that should see you into the final corner quite nicely. And I wasn't quite able to complete the move there, but uh, space was given through the chicane. And then I was up the inside into the horseshoe. And that's P12. So going well so far. Catching up with the group in front. Driver returning to the circuit from the left hand side. That's P11. And then a little bit later. Another position to be gained here. As the Swedish driver. Um, making a mistake going quite slow. And we're going to take ninth position. At the end of lap 4. Going in and pitting for the medium tyre. So this is the fun bit now. Where we can push on the better tyre try to make up as many positions as possible only well this is where it all actually goes wrong because we are now in ninth position with our sights on quite a few cars up in front obviously the one immediately in front of us and then there's a group of three a couple of seconds up the road who we can definitely catch up with over the course of the remaining laps now i've got the inside definitely break a bit too late there probably about 20 meters too late and i don't think this guy took too kindly to that and it was a fair attempt. I just braked way too late and it made it look way worse than it was. That could have definitely been completed if I just braked at the right point. And then I switched underneath this guy and for some reason just starts turning left and spins me off into the wall. And that was a very unfortunate moment. So I lose a lot of positions down into P15. I think I lose about nine seconds after all of that because of the crucial momentum loss as well so yeah losing about nine seconds some other cars battling here you see they're fighting and crashing so i was able to gain some positions back it wasn't a complete disaster i suppose especially given that we started last that guy just forgets to turn for the corner which isn't a great way to take a corner really then at the end i was kind of in the slipstream battle for seventh but i wasn't quite able to get another position 
and finished 18.7 seconds off the lead and I feel as though I could have perhaps been here around about P3 if I didn't have that spin with the other car but anyway enough of that setting qualifying lap here getting better each lap until the final lap 44 5 so I only did four laps and then jumped into the race that started as P6 naturally and then this race let me tell you this was a really 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 fun race and this was the race I was kind of hoping would happen perhaps starting at the back you know it's fun but you're just going to get caught up in an incident somewhere but I felt like starting a bit towards the front should be able to have a slightly cleaner and a better race and that's exactly what this race was this was a very 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 fun encounter indeed now you see already this german driver in p5 uh, unfortunately loses the toe of the cars in front and that's you know not ideal on a, on a track like daytona you really do need to be in that slipstream as much as possible so i felt like okay we're gonna go for this move and try to get rid of this guy try to dispatch him as early as possible bit of contact through the corner but i felt like i was already there i was on the inside I felt like okay we're gonna continue this guy can hopefully just get back into the slipstream and we can just catch back up with this group and that's pretty much what we did quite quickly as you see onto the back straight here i think we are just in the toe um we're just yeah pretty much right on the edge of it actually we lose the toe let's see if the other guys slip between each other but then uh, through the bus stop they all start battling and as a result lose crucial momentum i'm able to go up the inside and gain one position albeit with a half second penalty annoyingly so it seems like whenever i get some good momentum through that bus stop i'm perhaps not concentrating on the track limits and then looking at the cars get myself a penalty so we serve that penalty here and lose p5 are we going to lose p no we lose p4 are we going to lose p5 yes we are back down to six so it was an interesting first lap and uh, just one mistake there actually massive mistakes there all three cars there second third and fourth all going very wide and as a result we're going to gain two positions and um, <laughs> into the back of the German I felt like he braked really early uh, there for that corner thankfully we do have some front uh, bumper damage it's not going to affect the car too much which is okay Swedish driver behind with three second penalty so I saw that and I felt like I didn't really want him to get past but I was on the hard tyre he may well have been on the medium as you can see pops up the inside and I wasn't going to fight it if he was going to go for it I felt like okay I'm not going to turn in on you I'm just going to let you have the position uh, because you're going to serve that penalty anyway and I'll get the position back later in the lap <laughs> although this was a really weird moment here because you see the Swedish driver has a 3 second penalty, I have a 0 0.5, guy in 3rd has a 0 0.5 and I was able to gain 2 positions whilst serving a penalty so I was always going to serve, I was always going to gain against the Swedish driver but crucially I had some slightly extra momentum compared to the, the German there and I was able to carry it through the penalty zone as we both, uh, save, uh, both served the same amount of time and I was able to keep the momentum on the exit of the penalty and then gain the position. So up into third, 2.8 seconds off the lead, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. Actually, he tries to move around the outside. That was never going to work. Um, about a second away from the 4 GT in second. So respect to this guy in the 4 GT there in second place for driving something different, uh, the non-meta car. So fair play and respect to that. And... We have quite a lot of time here left to try to reel in the leader. Three seconds the gap at this point in time. And yeah, it's quite it's still quite a bit of a gap to catch up because you know you're still gonna have to be let's say maybe four tenths a lap quicker for the rest of the race, which is quite a lot, especially given that that guy was, you know, ahead of me in the whole race. They were ahead of me in qualifying, so they are technically quicker. It's always going to be quite tricky to try and catch up. The thing I was hoping for, really, was that first and second would start fighting. And that didn't really happen. You see, they're quite close to each other, but not quite close enough to be fighting and not losing time. Here on lap four, I am 2.4 seconds behind. Uh, with uh, the driver just behind for company. And what I didn't want was to be embroiled in a battle for P3, where we'd be losing time to the lead. 
I was more than happy if this guy wanted to go for this move to just let it happen. I'll facilitate this move. I'm not I'm not going to fight it. If you're on the medium tyres, I'll just let you go. And then I can sit in your slipstream as you try and catch up. That's, that's more than fine by me. And then into the exit of the infield section, he just drives very wide. And then I get the position immediately back. Uh, back into P3. 2.8 seconds off the lead. So I've not really made an impression on the lead on this lap. In fact, I've probably lost time, if anything. But thankfully, the guy behind here starts bump drafting, which is good. We were co uh, cooperating rather than fighting. And that meant we could gain on the, the two in the front a lot easier rather than switching positions and losing time. So that was quite good from that guy behind there. He does get a penalty, but thankfully he does give me a bump draft there, which is good. Again, we, we're just getting free time here. And the gap, 2.2 actually, 2.3. So I have actually gained on this second half of this lap. Now the leader goes in, he's on the hard tyre. I'm on the same strategy on the hard tyre. Now onto the medium. And so this race is just getting quite interesting now because we're going to leave the pit lane. Where are we going to exit onto the circuit? We have a car coming in up very quickly up the inside and we're not quite able to defend it. And uh, that guy's going to go through. So I'm in P9 here. This guy gets actually a very poor run on the way out of the horseshoe. So I'm quite easily able to out drag him on the exit and uh, keep this position or gain position up into P8. And I am 2.8 seconds behind Vegas, who will be the leader once everyone has pitted. And so I've lost a little bit of time there fighting on uh, the exit of that uh, pit, uh, of my pit stop. Now, this is where we can really get a proper gauge of where we are at, because uh, now that everyone's pitted and everyone's res kind of resumed their original positions, I'm now back in third, 2.7 off of the lead, 2.6 off of second. At the end of lap 6, start of lap 7, setting my fastest lap of the race so far. But still the gap was about 2.4. I wasn't really able to make much of an impression on those two guys that are up in front. Until really about this lap here, because they started making just small errors. And I was able to just chip away a couple of tenths here and there. For the first time, I, would, I, I had that gap below 2 seconds. 1.9 in fact. And this was quite good because I set the fastest lap of the race here... 45-2 and that's always good when you're trying to catch someone up because it just lets them know you know I've, I've got the fastest lap I'm the fastest person on the track right now it comes up on their screen it comes up on your screen it comes up on everyone's screen when a new faster lap is set so it's always good perhaps just to let them know that I am approaching although not as quickly as I would like still 1.8 seconds behind with two and a half laps left to go time is running out I just need to get into the slipstream of that guy in second once i've got that then it's all good because then i can start getting you know tenths for free on every straight still here 1.2 seconds off not quite close enough but uh, it's been a, a a good lap so far on the infield section through here into second gear it's experimenting with second and third both seem to work on the exit of that turn but not quite close enough yet one second away from second Let's see if we can get a good run through the bus stop. It looked like a bit of a mistake there from the guy in second, actually. And um, I'm able to get that gap down below one second for the first time. 1.5 off the lead. 1.3 by this point. This is the beginning of lap number nine. As you can see, we are getting closer, but the progress isn't very fast. And we are running out of time. There's only one more lap after this one. This is the penultimate lap now of the race. That uh, previous lap was a 45.3, so good consistency. Lap 7 and 8, two very quick laps in succession. But we need this lap to be a good one as well. Currently 8 tenths behind. If I can just gain one or two more tenths through this section, then I will be on. Uh, I'll be within slipstream range on the back straight, which is exactly what I need. I really need this right now. This is a very crucial moment in this race. Uh, I, I need these corners to be good. And thankfully, I, I do get a good run through here. And the gap just comes below 7 tenths. He makes a big mistake there, drifting wide into the wall. And he's going to lose quite a lot of momentum here on the back straight for the ninth time. And as a result, it's kind of an easy overtake. Because he just cannot reclaim that speed that he's lost from hitting the wall. And therefore, I'm up into P2. 
But it's not going to stop there, because as we head into the bus stop, take a look at the leader. He makes a massive mistake, just really doesn't turn in at all, and loses so much time, and suddenly, I'm in the slipstream, I'm pulling left, and I'm into the lead of the race at the beginning of lap number 10, or nearly the beginning of the final lap. Now, this race is not over yet because of the slipstream. They could always reply with a move, and there's not much I can do about it. You can see it there. He's firmly in the slipstream. He's going to pull out to the right-hand side. Now, I just have to really spot my breaking point here into turn one and make sure I do not overcook it. Keep him on the outside. There's not much he can do there, and I keep it on the inside quite nicely. Don't overshoot. Don't overslow it, and keep the position quite nicely. Decided not to defend here into the horseshoe. I didn't think he was close enough, so I didn't. And thankfully, no move came in. But ideally, I need to try and pull away beyond slipstream range because if they're in slipstream range, they could so easily fly back past me on that final straight. And, you know, that has happened when this race came up many months ago. That was a very common theme of the race. That you would sometimes be in the lead and then you would lose it on the final straight. Now, thankfully here, it looks like he had to defend the position from the German in the 4 GT. And that was the moment that really sealed the race for me. Because the gap went up to 1.1. Vegas got himself a penalty on that lap. As you can see, 0.5 second penalty. And I was able to pull away. The only thing that could really stop me now was uh, getting a penalty myself on the bus stop so I had to make sure that I drove this one quite nicely of course now with the worn tyres it could easily go wrong but I thought okay I've got a second to play with here so I don't have to really push so much I risk getting that penalty and thankfully that was that it was a really really enjoyable race a really really good race just trying to slowly catch up with this leading duo and then overhauling them at the end of lap number nine and it was a very, very enjoyable race. He had to serve his penalty here and then lost um, to the German. So the German in the 4GT did a really good job there, finishing in P2. And yeah, that's the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed that final race especially. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you next time. Goodbye.